and welcome to Quilt Moxie, the podcast where Quilt Moxie meets Craftsy.com, an online community dedicated to providing the best education and resources for crafters. Join me, Ariana, your host, and come along on my video journey where I participate in the Craftsy online classes and community. Meet up with us online at QuiltMoxie.com or at your favorite hangout, Craftsy, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter. Check the credits at the end of the show for more. You can also subscribe to our mailing list to get your next and every episode with show notes delivered directly to your email as soon as the episode is available. It's as simple as dropping your email address and checking Receive Podcast by email. Hello and welcome to episode 9. My name is Ariana and I'm your host. Today we're going into the gallery. We're continuing with Myra Wood's Crazy Lace Cardigan, Amy Herzog's Knit to Flatter, and we're going to begin with New Directions in Lace with Romy Hill. I have a demo for you and we're going to wrap it up by chatting about what's going on online. So let's get started. So you might have noticed that there are balloons in the gallery today and that is because I am so excited to let you guys know that we finally have a contest. Yes, you can win something on Quilt Moxie the podcast and it's not vintage wool. Isn't that great? I contacted Craftsy and Craftsy is going to be running a little contest in our Quilt Moxie the podcast Ravelry group. So all you have to do is join the group, tell us what your favorite Craftsy class is, and click on a link that will automatically register you to win a free Craftsy class. Once we have a hundred members in our Quilt Moxie the Ravelry group, we're going to announce the winner on our whenever that podcast is. So join the group. Let us know which Craftsy class you like and win a free Craftsy class. So I'm so thrilled. Yay, we have a contest. So now let's continue with Myra Wood's Crazy Lice Cardigan. You might have noticed in the background that uh, we have sort of the beginnings of the cardigan. I had to actually stop knitting because I wanted to uh, cut the steak live on the podcast. So finally today we're going to be cutting the steak. But in the meantime, I just wanted to sort of show you some of the highlights and some of the changes that I did to the class that uh, Myra was uh, running. All right, so let's take a look at what uh, what our mannequin is wearing. It is the Crazy Lace Cardigan, and it is designed by using uh, Knit to Flatter, Amy Herzog's formula for making a cardigan that's going to look good on you. So the mannequin right now has my new and beefier measurements, and you're going to notice that it actually sort of fits. The cardigan itself is going to have a either a button band or a zipper up the middle. When um, Myra did the the crew neck cardigan on Craftsy, her cardigan is actually not rid, uh, knitted in the round. The reason I'm knitting it in the round is because um, I find my stitch quality is better when I knit it in the round. And the first project I did on Craftsy, which was the Fair Isle West vest with um, Mary Jane Mucklestone, well, we learned how to do steaks and knit in the round. And it's stuck ever since. I really like steaks. So this cardigan also is steaked, and I knit it in the round. So let's look at some of the details of the cardigan. I'm going to try to bring her over here so you can get a close-up look of the back and the front of the cardigan. Here we go. Is this going to fall? Turning, turning, turning. I might have to do some video editing. Okay, so 
So here you can see the back of the cardigan. And what's so much fun about the Crazy Lace Cardigan class with Myra Wood is that you pick the lace patterns that you like. And the one on the top here is one of um, the patterns that I picked from the ones that Myra supplied. And then here's another one I found on Pinterest. This is some ribbing to bring in the waist. And on the bottom, where you can barely see, but I'll show it to you when we look at the cuffs, is, um, I don't know where I found this. I think it was one of the knitting uh, dictionaries. So I just picked it out of there and sort of uh, knitted that in. Okay, so you see the back. Let's go back to the front. Okay, she's going to do a full 360 here. Okay, so you're going to notice that there are three stitch markers, and this is to highlight where I have an issue. For example, here, the entire cardigan was done with the emu wool, vintage wool that Janet gave me. And uh, wherever you see a little stitch marker is because there's a problem. So in this case, I've got an extra thread that, um, that sort of came loose that I'm going to have to sew in or hide somehow. On the cuff, which is a bell cuff, I don't know if we can bring the cuff closer to the camera. Okay, so here you can see the bell cuff. There are two stitch markers, and that's... I don't know what happened, but these are two stitches that somehow, I don't know. But I, I'll find a way to sew them down so nothing is moving. And when I started doing the bell cuffs, um, my hubby and everybody in the family says, no, don't do it. In fact, I didn't want to do the bell cuffs because it's not something that I'm used to. But because it's part of the project, I decided, well, what's the big deal? I'm going to do it. And if I don't like it, well, guess what? I can cut them off and put a different cuff on. So what I'd like to do is I'm probably going to stop the camera and put on the cardigan so that you can see it before we cut the steak. The steak right now is just three stitches. Well, it's actually five stitches here in the middle. And... um when we put in a button band or a zipper closure, it's going to be roughly the same width. So uh, you'll, when I wear it, you'll see that it fits properly, you know. So, so I'm going to stop the camera now and put it on for you. And um, yeah, let's do that. I've changed into the cardigan, but uh, turns out on our videotaping you won't be able to see everything. So I did take some pictures that I'm going to try to insert here so that you can see what it looks like when I'm wearing it and to decide for yourself if the Amy Herzog Knit to Flatter formula, the way I interpreted it, it does flatter my uh, body shape. So uh, I find it's quite heavy, the, the wool, when I doubled it up because I did knit this one double. So I'm going to stand up now so you can see what it looks like somewhat. So here you go. I don't know if you can see a lot of it. And then here are those fancy cuffs, the bell-shaped cuffs. And what I like about this is that um, because I use the ribbing along the arm to sort of uh, match the waist. Here, I'm on my toes here. The waist here, I try to repeat it with the ribbing along the arms. You can pull up the sleeve and the bell shape will actually stay because of the ribbing. So if you find it's, you know, getting in your way with your hands, whatever, I find that it's kind of practical because you can lift up the sleeves. So I'm going to change back. So I'm going to stop the camera and we're going to look at the finer details of what I did on this cardigan. And we're back. 
So let's see, what did I learn this time doing the crew neck crazy lace cardigan? Well, uh, first of all, I have a problem when I'm doing socks one at a time because it takes me three socks to get one pair. And that's why I end up doing socks two at a time, sleeves two at a time, thumbs two at a time. Um, that way I will get two the first try instead of three. So what did I learn? I was doing the sleeves two at, two at a time and I was trying to train myself to be able to do one sleeve at a time. And what happened? Well, when I got down to the bell cuffs, you're going to notice that something, or maybe you, you won't notice it, but I noticed it after the fact, that there is a slight, slight difference between the two bell cuffs. I think one of them might have an extra row or two. But never mind. First of all, um, to me they look fine. And between the two cuffs, uh, I can't really see the difference. I'm going to show you a cuff close up. I'm not sure if this is the one with the extra or not. So you can see what the, the pattern is. What um, was really fun with Myra Wood's pattern is she does her shaping by decreasing needle size. So the entire arm is this, the same number of stitches from top to bottom. And all I did was uh, mold it with the ribbing and increase the size uh, with larger needle sizes. And for the bell shapes, there were increases as well. The, the first thing I did before I actually started this project was I did email on the platform Amy Herzog because she does recommend when you're going to do a knit to flatter project that you do your, your project in pieces and then you sew them together. And this is a crazy lace cardigan that's top down all in one piece. So she did make some recommendations on how I can uh, do some of the shaping for the waist shaping, which I did do um, by increasing all the way around, etc. So uh, it just goes to show that the uh, Craftsy teachers will help you wherever you need help. So what I learned from the Bolero, which was the first project in, in uh, Myra Wood's class, is that with the crochet cast on, I ended up doing the crochet cast on under at the armpit. And what I learned from the first project was that it does a really nice finish. You don't have to kitchener it shut. So now I'd like to show the camera where I did this now on the crazy lace cardigan crew neck, but I had forgot about what I had learned the first time, but you can see it here. So let's, let's, let's show how I was able to knit it shut by using the crochet cast on. Let me see. I'm now in the gusset area of the armpit. So let me see. Is the camera going to pick this up? So over here, I'm not sure where I'm pointing actually, you'll see half of the armpit area is where I was able to create a nice knit stitch by using the cro crochet cast on as a cast on. And I did not do any kitchenering. On the other half of the sleeve, I had forgotten what I had learned the first time around. So you can see the contrast. But this is at the armpit area and, you know, it can only get better from here on in. You can see the line here. This is where you would have to kitchener it shut, or in my case, I just knit it shut as I was continuing with the sleeve. So I thought that was really, really cool. So I think we're just about ready to cut the steak. So I did a sample. This time what I'd like to do different from the, the first um, 
sticking experience. So you'll remember my bolero. I also steaked and I cut it open and I have it here just to show you what it looks like on the inside. So let's see if the camera is going to pick it up. So you can see where the where the white is. That was my steaked crochet steak. Okay. And those buttons are just backer buttons to give support to the front buttons. So I did the same, same thing with this um, cardigan. I'm going to show you where I cro I'm not sure if you can even see it. This is the actual cardigan. And I have the crochet reinforcement already done on it. So we're ready to cut it. And when I did the crochet reinforcement, it was done with a single strand because I had doubled it to knit the entire cardigan. So it matches perfectly. I did a sample. Okay, so let me just show you my little sample steak swatch. So what I did was I swatched up a steak of maybe 10 stitches. And you're going to see, here are the two pieces. So the first step I had to do was I had to reinforce it. And here's the re reinforced crochet stitching, which was now here. We cut it open and you can see because it's sticky wool, um, this is not going to come apart. But even so, I just didn't like all these little stragglers here. So I decided my sample button band, which is here the same, the other side, I added the button band here and I covered the straggly stick with a single ply or a single, not a single ply, but a single thread. I knitted that with the single thread of a white just to show where I'm doing it. And here when I turn it around, you're going to see the effect on the front. And once I do this with the same color wool, I'm sure it's going to be invisible. And what's nice about this is you get a nice sort of sturdy uh, support for your button band and it makes a really nice finish on the back as well. So this is what I'd like to do for my button band. Okay, so let's get our scissors out. I'm going to try to cut the steak on the mannequin so that you can okay. see it happen. And we're back. I brought I'm the mannequin a little, a little bit closer to the camera hoping that you'll be able to see what we're doing here. Not sure how well this is going to go with the, here are my big scissors, which is what I'd like to use to cut the steak. I know we can do this with tiny, tiny scissors and uh, the craftsy teachers, well, Mary Jane Mucklestone, when she was demonstrating cutting steak, she was very surgical about it, but well, anyway, I'd like to try it with big scissors. We'll see what happens. Before I do that, I wanted to point out another mistake that uh, I forgot to mention before. If you'll look at the steaked area, you'll notice that the middle pattern here, this sort of argyle pattern that I did, uh, there are an extra bunch of knit stitches on this side versus this side. So if I re remember to do this, I'm not sure if I will, I'm planning to when I get to this point here, jump over one row and pick up the stitches for the button band so that it matches the amount of width between the two. That's if I remember. And I'm hoping that the net result will not show. So, well, stay tuned for that. Maybe in the next episode you'll see the result. Okay, so let's cut, let's cut. Here we go. So we know that to cut the steak, it's going to be, and usually I would have probably have done this inside out, but I just wanted to, 
I'm just going to pick any spot here. Can we see this? Look at that. Look at that. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting the pearl bar between the two. Here we go. So I have a hole. There we go. And now all I do is I use my scissor and I come out. Look how big this one is going to be. This is a huge cut. And these are the scissors that need to be padlocked. You go out, you buy yourself a padlock because you don't want your kids to be using this to open a plastic package. What is the difference between these scissors and your dollar store scissors? Maybe fifty, sixty dollars. So that's why, look at that. Ta-da! It's all open. Nothing is unraveling. So here we go. I've got myself positioned again. Let me see. I'm in an awkward position here, so it's not... I'm going to make her face me a bit more so that I have a better view of what I'm doing. So I don't recommend you, you know, getting yourself into a contortion when you're cutting open your steak. But let's see here. So I'm piercing, and I'm lining up the, and I'm pulling and lining up the bar, the bars of the pearls, and just cutting. And well, we'll see what kind of result we get once we're done. Lining up the pearl bars, cut. Okay, we're coming to the top. So, where are we here? Ta-da, look! Ta-da! Okay. Still cutting. Okay, starting from the bottom. And we're coming in for a finish. All right, so they're cut. The steaks are cut open. And did anything unravel? No. Here we go. This is it. Can the camera pick it up? In any case, nothing is unraveling. I still have my threads here where my threads had ended. But other than that, the, the cut is pretty clean and nothing is coming apart. So the next time, uh, I podcast. I'm hoping that I have a completed cardigan. I don't know if there's going to be a zipper or a button band or what it's going to be. So I hope that you'll come back and find out. Now I'd like to move into new directions in lace. In 2014, I hope to go to Laceland with Craftsy. And the first class that I signed up for is New Directions in Lace with Romy Hill. And she does a, a doll shawl. And that was what I wanted to do. So while I was preparing for this podcast, I started a little bit of knitting in her class. And I'll show that to you now. And of course, something happened and I ended up starting the large shawl and then I had to change the knitting so that I can go back to the doll size shawl. So just hold on. Let me pull it over. Oh, I should mention that the other thing that I ended up doing for her class was 
Here is the wool that I got from Janet, which is for the Crazy Lace Cardigan. And as you'll recall, Janet gifted me, um, I think it was 20 skeins of 50 gram wool. And in a prior podcast, I was doing some popcorn, microwave popcorn setting dyeing in a mason jar. And that's what I did. So I took this wool, which felt in a heartbeat, and I transformed it into this color in my microwave. And that is what I am knitting the lace shawl out of. So the first thing that we did was we did a swatch. I really enjoy doing swatches. They're so relaxing. Are there mistakes in this swatch? Yes, there are. Can we see them? Uh, yes, we can. I, I don't know. I'm showing you the back. Am I showing you the back? I don't know where they are right now. Oh, actually this is the top because I did bind off using the uh, stretchy bind off. So, oh, here's the mistake. Here it is. There it is. I shifted over. But it's fun to do swatches for lace because you get to try the pattern. And when there is a mistake, well, it's not a big deal, is it? So here's the swatch. What's fun about uh, the Romy Hill class is she gets you to do something called a butt belly button for the middle of the shawl. So I'm going to show you where I'm at so far with this little shawl here. I hope that it's going to show up for you. Uh, let me see here. Okay. So I tried to just sort of pin it out so that you could see a little bit of the design. In the middle here, right there, whoops, here, is where Romy Hill begins with a belly button. And that was a lot of fun. She says that's the hardest part of the whole shawl. And so I hope that's the case because that went quite well. The way she does her belly button, it's sort of an uh, it's sort of an I cord. Lots of DPNs were involved, but she gives you a choice. She says you can either crochet it, or you can use a knitted uh, I cord. And guess what I did? Double knitting. Look how cool this is. So this is from uh, okay. Lucy Neepy's class where she so taught here's us a close up of the belly button. Uh, that I did, and this time I used the Lucy Neat B double knitting technique for doing a belly button, which is awesome, because look how even, and there are no laddering stitches, nothing. Very, very easy. So that's what I used. And um, so when we continue next time, I'm hoping to continue with Romy Hill's uh, class, Lace Knitting, and I hope to show you the rest of this little scarf or shawl, doll shawl, she calls it. So let's move on to our little demo. So today I'd like to demo using two crochet hooks to create I-cord. What you're going to need are two bamboo crochet hooks the same size and one emery board and a sharpener. So the first step is to sharpen the blunt end of your crochet hooks, both of them. So you'll just put it inside the sharpener, sharpen it just like a pencil. When you have it sharp to your liking, you're going to use the emery board and you're going to file the tip so that it's nice and smooth, just like a knitting needle. And that's how we're going to use it. To begin your I cord with two crochet hooks, you're going to hold your crochet hooks this way. On your right hand, you have the hook showing. And on the left hand, you will have the needle end showing. And this is how we're going to be doing the I-cord. I'm going to show you the traditional I-cord that I've already begun traditionally with two knitting needles. 
So basically what we're doing to create an I-cord here, you can see with the, uh, the lime colored yarn, is you're going to be knitting in the round four stitches. And when you get to the end of the row, if you're using DP end, you would slide them to this end and then knit that way. But with a circular needle, you would just transfer back your four stitches ready to do the next row of I cord. So here we go. One more row. And that's how you're creating the I cord. So let's transfer that back and I'll show you how it, how it works with the two crochet hooks. What I like about the crochet hooks is that they're short, shorter than DPNs. So you might like that as well. Uh, the other thing about the crochet hook is you're not going to distort your stitches. I find it gives me a better stitch quality because the yarn gets hooked completely. So now that I've got it transferred onto my crochet hook, I'm going to take the other crochet hook and just like a DPN, I can slide it to this end and now I will crochet my next row of I cord. Here we go. Okay, so what's so great about the crochet hook? Well, uh, what I like about this is that the first stitch, which is where you usually create a ladder in the back of your I cord, what you can do is you can keep it loose, you're not going to lose your stitch, and you can pull through a loop very close to where the last stitch left off in the back and continue. to create more of your I-cord. Again, slide it over. Slip off that stitch. It's not going to go anywhere and you can just put, without even looking, you can pull it through the back using the least amount of yarn to make sure that you do not get any ladders in your I-cord. You can also transfer the stitches back if you want to. So again, it's loose. Pull it through. Now when you're transferring your stitches back to the other needle, just make sure that the hook is facing you straight on that way it'll be easier to pop the stitches off. And you only have to pop off three, of course, because the fourth one, you can just pull it through and finish your I-cord row. Now let's take a look at the back and see what your I-cord looks like. So here's the front. And here's the back of the I cord. And you'll recall that at the bottom, I had started off with the knitting needles, and I find that you get a better result, in my case, with crochet hooks. In any case, it's just another option for creating I cord. I hope you enjoyed this demo. I hope you enjoyed the little demo and uh, now I'd like to talk a little bit more about our Ravelry contest. I'd like to thank uh, Craftsy for offering a free class for us to encourage more members in Quilt Moxie, the podcast Ravelry group. So if you'll recall, um, there is a thread, look for contest, Craftsy free class giveaway. All you have to do is 
Leave a post about your favorite crafts class that you've taken and uh, click on the link and you will be automatically entered into the contest. Uh, I believe it's Melissa at Craftsy is going to be doing the actual drawing. You have to be a member of our Ravelry group. And uh, once we hit our first milestone of 100 members, we're going to do the uh, free Craftsy giveaway drawing. So I hope you're going to participate in that. Also, what's happening online, I was honored to be interviewed by Knitting Blooms Tina. Uh, Tina has the Knitting Blooms podcast. Many of you are probably already subscribed to her Knitting Blooms podcast which I've mentioned before here on the podcast, it's an amazing podcast. She has so many wonderful tutorials, etc. So I will be uh, linking all that up in the show notes. So if you'd like to check out our interview, it was a lot of fun. And I've asked Tina if she wouldn't mind um, being interviewed uh, on one of these podcasts, and she has agreed. So look forward to that in an upcoming podcast. Fingers crossed. I just want to make a little comment about show notes. Now, when I'm watching the podcasts, other people's podcasts, every now and then I do like to check out the show notes just to find out um, some sort of reference or the information on a book that uh, the podcaster was talking about. Well, I tried to do the same thing for the show notes with Quilt Moxie, the podcast. So in those show notes, you can expect to find links and reference information and even some references to stuff that we didn't actually talk about on the podcast, but I, I decided might be of interest because it, it, um, it might, it just might be of interest to you. So I've added them into the uh, show notes. So, you know, uh, the show notes are totally available. You can get them by email or on our website, or they're there for you whenever you need to refer back to a particular show. Or if you think that there should be something in the show notes about a certain topic that we talked about, odds are I might have already added them there for you. Another thing I'd like to point out with the show notes, whenever possible, uh, I do use affiliate links and I like to have affiliate links for whoever the source is. So if it is uh, another podcaster and they have a very cool um, something or other that they've referred to, I will use their affiliate link uh, so that should anybody click on it, uh, a couple of pennies will end up in their their bank for referring you to uh, whatever item or service or product that they're talking about. So I'd like to encourage you whenever possible to click on some of the links that are in our show notes so that, uh, you know, somebody will benefit at the end of the line. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. And I'd like to invite you back next time when we continue with Myra Woods' Crazy Lace Cardigan. And we're going to go into Graceland with Romy Hill and uh, continue with her lovely doll shawl. So uh, take care. Enjoy the holidays. Bye for now. À la prochaine.